Most mental health services are offered by certified professionals who play an authoritarian role in the treatment process. In recent decades, a powerful movement for peer-run services has been growing and making a significant impact in people's lives. It comes down to um, a shared experience, an ability to empathize. I found a sense of community and connection. When I think of peer support, which is a concept that I find useful, I think about two people or multiple people who have some common experiences and are operating as much as possible on an equal playing field or being intentional to reduce or remove power imbalances. Peer support involves having people with lived experience provide services. Having peers in a support role allows them to model what is possible after one goes through extreme emotional distress. Peer support is mutually beneficial. According to the help or therapy principle described by social psychologist Frank Reisman, helping others is deemed absolutely essential to helping oneself. When people recovered, they basically disappeared. And even people who were doing well uh, would not be inclined to tell their story. I found my people and my calling and my, my place within the people um, who were peers, who, uh, whatever you want to call them, who sat beside me and um, listened to me. What I went through, other people have been through too. Um, and each of our stories is unique, but there is some common ground. And I guess that's what all the groups get to and why the groups work so well. When People who've had similar experiences, for, for me, that was the most helpful because there's um, not a lot of judgment um, Does usually doesn't enter that conversation when somebody else has, has a similar experience. Uh, what shows up is empathy, and empathy is incredibly healing um, from trauma and force. The late Judy Chamberlain emphasized the need to distinguish between real alternatives to psychiatry and those that are alternatives only in name. A true alternative grants all decision-making power to individuals using the services. The Recovery Learning Community in Massachusetts is one of the most well-known examples of a peer-run organization. It's what they say in the brochures and all that, but it's community, you know? it's. It's, it's something invisible that you can't touch. It's that, it's that you're not alone thing, but you feel it. I always say the RLC saved my life because it saved my mind. It opened the doors to like the alterna an alternative that I wasn't mentally ill or mentally sick, that I didn't have the chemical imbalance. I mean, maybe, maybe I do. I don't know. We don't know. It's the, on the honest truth. Hearing voices groups, which started in the Netherlands and now meet all around the world, or a fast-growing, peer-run service. These groups are based on the idea that voice hearing is part of the human condition, not a pathology. Online databases are available with details on the meeting time and location of groups happening in each country. People came together because it was sort of shame that you're hearing voices, you're going through altered states, psychosis. Let's have a group where, where it's okay. And let's talk about, let's get the support for it. I wish there were hearing voices groups in the hospital. Oh, that would be, if there was a hearing voices group in the hospital, oh my God, that would have been key. I mean, that would have been amazing. Just a place for people to come and talk about experiences like hearing voices or just you know looking at reality differently or experiencing reality differently and then for people to share different ideas about what kind of problems they have with that what works for them to deal with the problems alternatives to suicide groups are another type of peer support group for people suffering with suicidal thoughts or actions just walking into that room i kind of felt at home or i kind of felt I could feel, I felt safe. It was the first time I could just openly talk about suicide um, without it being weird. 
Suicide's not the problem. It's often a solution. It's a, a desperate solution, a solution that often we hope someone doesn't choose. The research suggests that actually going into the medical system where you lose all your power and you get essentially punished for talking about thinking about killing yourself, that is where the rates of suicide increase. And in fact, if you give people the opportunity to simply talk openly about death and wanting to die and, and many other thoughts that are seen as taboo in society, that people are much better equipped at that point to move through those feelings. We don't consider it suicide prevention because suicide prevention usually comes from a place of controlling people. We do see that often people don't want to kill themselves as a side effect of being able to have those conversations. For those who don't have a peer support group in their local community or don't feel comfortable attending one, online forums have been valuable. The Hearing Voices Network, Icarus Project, New Light Beings, Facebook, and Reddit have hosted these forums. I've walked people through that experience online, you know, and, and on, on the phone too. Some people, they would post something that was really bothering them and there'd be like 20 replies, just helping them out, giving them some insight, giving them support. I've had so many people messaging me saying thank you. A lot of people who, who are gonna commit suicide, like I said, like the site saved their life. Like they, they didn't have a community where they can openly express themselves without being judged. For those in need of immediate support during crisis, peer respite houses offer an alternative to using a psychiatric hospital. Although the number of research studies conducted on them is limited, given that peer respites are still in their early stages of development, the American Journal of Community Psychology published a randomized controlled trial in 2008 comparing peer respite to psychiatric hospitals. The study revealed, first, that participants using peer respite houses experienced significantly greater improvement than participants in psychiatric hospitals, and second, that the average cost of staying at a peer respite was one-third of the cost of staying at a psychiatric hospital. Similar to soteria houses, peer respite houses emphasize being with people rather than doing to people. Afia is one peer respite house located in Western Massachusetts. The idea of Afia uh, and peer respite in general is that we create a non-clinical space that is an alternative to hospitalization. And in that alternative, people might get some of the pieces that they find useful in hospital without the negative and harmful pieces. I checked myself into AFIA. I left five, six days later, refreshed and together. It is a little three bedroom opportunity for three people at a time. You get to do art projects. You get to feel creative. Maybe you hang out and watch TV for a couple days. Maybe you sleep visits with family that were supervised or somewhat attenuated happened a lot at Afia because you could work you could go to work five days a week and not lose your job and know that you could come to a place and continue to have your breakdown breakthrough i want a little Afia in every neighborhood is such a compassionate alternative to a broken system concerns about the peer model have surfaced since the government began training and paying what are called certified peer specialists. Critics argue this professional title reinforces the medical model in what is supposed to be a non-authoritarian peer support system driven by lived experience. If we're not careful in peer-led movements, we're gonna have hierarchy. My peer recovery job I understand now was contingent on me never having any kind of a thing that looked like a break again, and they certainly didn't want me to come back right away and talk about it. To ensure that peer support programs are deliberately organized, psychiatric survivors started an organization called Intentional Peer Support, which trains providers in how to form mutually supportive relationships. Rather than me being here to help you because uh, you're sick and I'm an expert, um, and therefore I know what you need, shifts the relationship to thinking about how can we learn together? I come with a worldview and you come up with a worldview. We can learn and grow together. You've got as much to offer me as I 
gift to offer you. A conversation and a relationship really comes alive when both of our worldviews are visible. Sometimes those can be absolutely magical moments in a conversation. You know, suddenly you know you're not alone, you've been seen and heard. Now that we have seen how peer support has brought hope and wellness into our lives, our next segment will discuss how human connection played an important role in sparking a movement for social change.